You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandyo Chakravarti. Wholesale prices have shot up in the last one year, and that is big trouble for small businesses and small shopkeepers. Why? But let me first tell you the wholesale price index. What's happened there? It's shot up by 14.5 percent in March compared to what it was last year. But before I tell you why it's affecting small businesses and small shopkeepers, let me explain to you. what wholesale prices are wholesale prices and most of you probably know are prices paid by traders and by business owners by factories these are input costs right usually they are sold at a discount because they're bought in bulk in fact if you go to sadar bazar which is largely a wholesale market you will be able to buy things at much cheaper than your local shop but yes instead of buying one tin of corn maybe you'll have to buy 10 tins of corn because you have to buy in bulk to avail of that discount and your shopkeeper gets that discount and is able to charge a slight premium to you and me which is the maximum retail price of course the maximum retail price also includes taxes and it also includes uh, the cost of transporting from a factory or a wholesale mandi to the shop now the final thing that i said is that the cost of transport and distribution is included in retail prices but it largely excluded in wholesale prices of course the uh, things like agricultural products there is a transportation cost from the farm to the wholesale mandi that would be included in the wholesale prices and even sometimes uh, costs of things which are minerals there would be some amount of transportation before the wholesale market is reached and that would uh, be also included but the final last mile connectivity transportation cost is not included now let's see what has happened the gap between wholesale prices and retail prices and this is all commodities as i told you the wpi or wholesale price index has gone up 14.5% 14 14.5% in one year but you and i are paying about 7% more or paid 7% more in march right less than half the rise is less than half one key reason for this is that there is sometimes a gap there's a gap between the time when wholesale prices rise and the time it reaches us so that gap so is probably spread across a month so if this has gone up in march maybe the consumer price index will show up the rise will show up in april and also there are different weights uh, so wholesale versus rate the weights of individual items in it are different and let me explain what that means that let's say that you uh, are making rice boiling rice to make rice the price of rice in the market has gone up 30% so the cost of boiled rice for you will also go up 30% but let's say when you make pakoras to make it slightly more crispy you add 10% rice powder in the batter so the cost of rice there is 10% so if rice has got prices have gone up 30% then actually the impact on pakoras is just 3% 1/10 so you can understand how the weight of individual commodities makes a difference to the rate the rate of rise of the two things wpi and cpi and i'll explain what the weight weights are if you look at the food i uh, group or food items foods and beverages then in the consumer price index or retail prices uh, of things it's about 46% in rural areas villages it's even more than that whereas in the wholesale price index because ultimately as inputs it's only the trader who's buying uh food items it's 20 and maybe food processing industry is just 24% let's look at fuel and light for us out of the every 100 rupees that we spent 7 uh, rupees 7 rupees or 7% is on fuel and light that's the weight in the consumer price index but in the wpi because it is production involved it is 13% and the components are different for us it is electricity plus a little bit of coal but largely um petrol diesel lpg for um for companies it is going to be a little bit of fuel and diesel but also commercial rates of electricity and also coal and mineral oil including crude oil so the rates are different the, the materials are different apparel apparel prices uh, apparel for us is 6% of our cost but if i look at the wholesale price index it is just 1% of the wholesale price index in terms of weight services is 27% weight in the consumer price index basket right 27% of what we spend is services but in the wholesale price index it does does not exist because there are no wholesale services right services are bought to bought directly by 
you may be certain services are bought by companies but that's a separate issue but you and i directly buy it in retail so it's 27 percent of the consumer price index but nothing in the wholesale price index so that makes a difference now let's look at the key weights so i'll just take two things the difference that you'll see wholesale versus retail prices and this is the food group we'll see that in the wpi the growth of whole uh, food group prices is 8.7 but in the consumer price index, it is just less than 7%. Again, there's a marginal variation which can be caused by weight of different items within that group and also which market it's being collected from. But it does show us that in general, traders or retailers are having to pay more now for what they're buying and they aren't being able to sell it to us at the same rate. <laughs> now let's take fuel and light. As I said, fuel and light and it's fuel and power and wholesale price index it uh, includes coal it includes mineral oil and of course a part of diesel and petrol and electricity that has gone up by 34.5 percent because we know the price of crude oil has shot up and crude oil is a is an uh, input in many industries whereas in throughout most of march thanks to the elections and even before that Fuel prices weren't raised. Most of it was raised in April. So in the consumer price index, you're not seeing that difference. So therefore, this could be one key reason why uh, wholesale prices have gone up so sharply and consumer price index hasn't gone up. And that really is just a way of accounting things and the delay in price transfer based largely on one item, which is fuel and light. But let's see the difference between wholesale and retail prices for an entire year, from April 2021 to March 2022. The wholesale price index in this period has gone up 13% and it has consistently been above 10%. The average consumer price index has gone up just by 5.5%. So you can see that huge gap here, a big gap. The wholesale price index uh, has gone up by more than double of what the consumer price index has gone up by which clearly tells us it clearly tells us that input costs have gone up and mostly it is for small businesses and also for retailers they're not being able to pass it on to consumers because there's not enough demand it's only big companies which have pricing power so big car makers even though demand has gone down they are able to increase prices Big FMCG companies which make biscuits, uh, shampoo, oil, toothpaste, they are able to increase prices because they are now monopolies, they are oligopolies, a few companies controlling the market. Small traders and small businesses were first wiped out by GST, Covid made it worse and now we can see prices, the price pressure on them making it much worse for them even further. And I'm going to break it up into input costs which have gone up and I'm going to compare it for March and again April to March to show you that these input costs have actually not just gone up in March. Here, fuel and power, 34.5% in just March. But if I look at the April to March period, it's gone up 30, almost 33%. Basic metals required as inputs in making things. Uh, it's gone up by 26% in March, but 25.5% between the April to March period. So the average prices have been rising for more than a year. Textiles, 12.6% in march in fact it was even higher in the april to march percent so it's slightly cooled right now uh, rubbers and plastics similarly 8.6 percent rise in march but look at the april to march rise 12 percent and finally chemicals 12.7 percent in march and 12.9 percent april to march an entire year of inputs being extremely expensive and not being fully passed on to you and me so let's just look at why i'm saying small businesses are in trouble because they face these input costs for nearly a year but not being able to pass it on to us because we don't have the money to buy it if they try to pass it on to us we won't buy it big companies have been able to pass it on in the last one year by through their pricing power because they control the market they're able to pass it on and that is helping them even more in killing small businesses even further as small businesses uh, died out in the COVID period, 
big companies have got even more pricing power and this inflation is allowing them to increase prices but small businesses simply cannot compete and that is something that's showing up in distress in small businesses the fact that the loans they've taken they're not being able to pay back either they've become they're not being able to pay back certain installments or their interest or they've just defaulted and look at what has happened in september 2020 when already the situation was getting a little bad because there had been uh, four or five months of uh, lockdown, COVID. The uh, total number of bad loans and defaults in the MSME or the small business space, and these are in lakh crore, right? You can see rupees lakh crore was about 1.46 lakh crore, right? In September 21, it has gone up to 1.66 lakh crore and that is nearly 14% up. And Anecdotal evidence tells us that this has become even worse since September, between the September to April period. In the last few months, it has worsened thanks to the consistent rise in prices. And what is even worse is that because prices are rising and RBI is likely to increase interest rates, small businesses will find it very difficult to pay back loans and they're going to be uh, affected by that. Many of them will go bankrupt. There is a uh, bit of information, I'll deal with that in another show in detail, which shows that the number of corporates who have gone, who have died, simply companies which used to regularly give their um, uh, annual statements, their income statements to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, those have dropped by 6% in 2021 in the COVID year compared to the previous year. They on an average dropped by about 2%, one year before COVID, when things were slowing down, it dropped by 3%. In the COVID year, it dropped by 6%. And we'll have to wait and see what has happened in the year after that. Small businesses have probably got wiped out even more. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Like us, subscribe to our channel and share this video.